wanted to do a video on my truck and trailer combination. Uh, truck is a 2013 Ford F-150 XLT Super Crew Cab. Uh, has the uh, EcoBoost engine in it. 3.55 gear ratio on the rear end. Here's the sticker for the GVWR. The trailer is a 2018 Forest River Vibe 308 BHS from tongue to back bumper it's about 36 feet and the cabin area is about 32 and a half feet roughly somewhere in there I got a level pro system that I wanted to install on it that way I can not have to use bubble levels and all that in the future. You can tell if you're level when you back into your spot. This is a new warehouse that was just built. This concrete this way is 100% level. Concrete this way is actually running down a little bit. Side grill, spare tire. The ladder I had installed. No vibe of this year came with a ladder. It was actually quite difficult to try to get one put on it. I did change my 751 locks. There's a nice website. Uh, 751 ch.com you can do all your measurements they'll send you new locks to replace with your 751s that way everyone doesn't have a key that's the inverter for the refrigerator you can run your refrigerator when you're going down the road this has a residential 10 cubic foot refrigerator bunkhouse in the back it's queen bed this is actually not a factory couch we got this at front room furnishings and it is electric there is no electric at all in this slide out that entire slide has no electrical outlets anywhere the closest electrical outlet is right back there so i found that kind of weird I had to actually run electricity up so this couch would work these are the buttons that let the couch recline or not they were over here but you can't get down in there because it's really tight up against the wall so I just took them out ran them back up so that you could access them when you're sitting there they're completely out of the way there's an extension cord here so if you have something you want to plug in this is a USB port so if you want to charge your phone or your tablet you're not really gonna have to run extension cords any further than that but if you have a device you need to plug in that doesn't take a USB then that extension cord there will give you some power cup holders so you can set your drink there got one on each side the upper cabinets factory they did not come with these shocks I bought those put those on that way they'll stay open when you lift them up before you had to hold them up and try to put your stuff in and out of there without those shocks being there and one shock's plenty enough to hold these up they're really really good shocks a 
that's the 10 cubic foot refrigerator microwave hood range bunkhouse in the back it's at the entertainment center a little bit of storage might throw a couple shelves in there put more uh, like shorts and uh, socks and t-shirts like that in there than anything else one bunk up there jackknife sofa here flips out into a, a bed upper bunk will actually lift up and you can latch it up there so you got more headroom when you're sitting on the sofa slide door Middle closet here. It's got a rack in there so you can hang clothes in there if you need to hang something up for the kids in the bunkhouse. There's a little more storage areas in here. Little cubbies. Restroom. Good size. I like the toilet being at an angle so that you're not smashed up against a cabinet and a wall. And the outside door that leads right in is is great so when you're outside and you need to come in you don't have to track all the way through the RV to use the restroom. This goes up into your vent. It's a thermal. Really helps keep it cooler in the summer and warmer in the winter. Usually when I'm not using it. I always keep it out and the vent open. There's a Air Max cover up there so you can leave it open. Rain or shine. Won't allow any water to get in. I did change the lock so that you could have a privacy lock on it. Factory didn't come with any lock whatsoever. Put a light under the sink so that when you're in here trying to shave you can have some light down there. There is a light up there. At least they did put one over the vanity. Previous years I didn't see any over the vanity. It's kind of difficult to shave when you had no light. Uh, U-shaped dinette. Gives you a couple more seating places there in the rear. sofa fit in like a glove it's extremely comfortable it's so much more comfortable than the factory the factory sofa in here was the same jackknife in the back just a little bit shorter and it was almost like you were sitting at the kitchen table when you were sitting in that thing it just was not comfortable at all this you can sit on it sink down in it recline it back so it is real comfortable now, there's a 40 inch TV here it's actually flipped around into the bedroom you unlatch this and pop it up and it'll swivel around. A lot of people don't like this particular model because when you're sitting on the sofa, you're at an awkward position trying to look at the, the television and watch TV. I don't mind it. I don't, I don't think it's too bad of a, a layout. Works for us. This will drop down into a bed as well so you can sleep uh, Two up in the queen bed, two here, four back in the bunkhouse. So you can sleep a good eight in here. Uh, for the electrical that I had to run for the sofa, I ran it underneath the floor and brought the cord out here. So I just take this when we get to the campground, plug it in. I have power to the to the recliner that's over there. Uh, one thing about Forest River drives me nuts is anything you do, you void the warranty to your trailer. Anything that's not a pre-authorized modification, you will void your warranty. This is the back bunkhouse and that's daylight right down there through the floor. So their build quality I'm not the least bit impressed with at all. I know some uh, travel trailers, Jayco, uh, it is a pretty good name for quality. The last uh, travel trailer I had was a 30-foot Keystone Sprinter. 
and the build difference is just, just entirely different. I thought the build quality was really good. And, and I don't mind it not being built the best as long as it doesn't fall apart when I'm driving down the road, then I'm, I'm fine with it. The extended warranty on most of these only cover the electrical parts anyway, so the extended warranty doesn't care if you cut holes in the wall. Um, real quick, this, this trailer being so long, the only outside storage you have is up in the front. So, if you look at the length of that, you see where the axles are. The axles are wider, further apart, which is supposed to give you better control. Uh, and, it, and it does. The Keystone, they were a lot closer together, so you were really all over the road most of the time in the rear end you had a lot of the rear end flying back and forth and this doesn't do it as bad but when you're pulling with a half ton pickup truck you get a good 10 mile an hour wind it's it's going to have you over the road a little bit but RVers they take their time they're not in no hurry to get nowhere I'll take back roads if I need to I mean the, the truck pulls great it's got plenty of power for it it's comfortable gets up and down hills great truck probably could have been a 250 but I already bought the camper so this is the setup that I have so the the storage that's in here is only up in the front so by the time you stick everything in these storage compartments and this is a pass-through goes all the way to the other side if you stuck everything in here that you need your your um, your tools I've got the X-Chocks for the tires in there, and I would absolutely recommend X-Chocks because when you put those on, it's, it's as solid as it gets. These actually have the uh, electronic stabilizer jacks. These are not leveling jacks. even comes with a remote so when you get to your put your pin in go to your next front stabilizers down that way you're not standing there in one spot having to put your jacks up and down, especially if you're on a sunny side. Rear stabilizers. On the back, the driver's side will come down first, then the passenger side will come down. So you got front and rear stabilizer jacks. You got lights, you can turn the lights on inside, slide one and two, awning. This is uh, one of the awesome features that I like. If I don't break it in the process. Alright. Try that again. And you kind of stop this on your own it doesn't stop by itself uh, if you want to lower one end just grab this arm pull it down that'll lower one end of the awning now, i've been told that the rain 
will kind of do that on its own, but that's not something I'd ever bank on. I mean, it may or it may not. You don't want your awning to come crashing down to figure it out the hard way. And if you ever have a malfunction for some reason, get it in there's a little hole that on the end of this up on the top there's a little hole there with the rubber plug you can pull you can pull that out put your uh, stick in there and hand crank it back in rolls back in it'll stop itself this is the crank that comes it doesn't come with it you actually have to buy this thing it's like 45 or 50 bucks but they gave it to me for free which is nice of them this is what you would stick in the awning to crank your awning back in if it got stuck and then if you have problems with your slides there's a hole right there piece here Stick that in and that'll actually crank your your slide in or out. I intend to cut this down so I can get a drill head put on it so if that happens I can just stick the drill on it and not stand there and crank for a couple hours. This is where you would do the same for the other slide, for the rear slide on the other side. This is an easy hose carrier that I installed because the hose that I have kind of does not fit in the bumper. It's a real tight fit. And then usually after no time you get a nice rusty, gets all rusty back in there inside your bumper. gets it out of the way really nice and this is an adjustable one so you can adjust it for whatever length that you want it to be it comes in black or white I don't know if you can see that from the sun glare uh, the tires on here they're actually rated, got a pretty good rating on them. Uh, 65 pound max, 75 mile an hour. Most of these tires are 60 mile an hour max, so I was really surprised to see the 75 mile an hour rating on them. Uh, they're a ST special trailer, special tire, 225 75 R15 radial. It's like they're a Castle Rock brand. So with the storage, you stick all your stuff in there you're gonna add depending on what you carry the dry weight on this uh, tongue weight I believe was uh, 743 and if that's the only place that you have to put storage anything you stick in there is just gonna weigh more tongue weight and your distribution system is only going to do so much you don't want to overload it um, I'll do another short little video on a trailer tongue weight scale that I got it's a really neat little device you just either put it on a hydraulic jack and jack it up under the coupler and it'll tell you what your tongue weight is or you can take it off and 
um, set your jack on it and it'll tell you what the weight is without having to find a, a scale house or do the bathroom scale trick. So we'll go up on the roof. There's vents on the tanks. That's the max airflow cover. There's only one vent on this trailer. Last trailer I had three vents. This has one. Skylight over the shower. Air conditioner. It's a 13.5 BTU Coleman. Um, the system and the way it's hooked up just absolutely sucks. It's horrible. The idea is great, but the way it runs isn't. That's your TV antenna, so you don't have to worry about cranking it down or losing it. That's actually in the travel position, but if you do have it turned in opposite direction, it's not going to rip it off. The slides on here, you can walk on the slides. Some trailers you can, some trailers you can't. It's actually nice that you can, so when you want to maintenance your seals and stuff you don't have to worry about ripping the slide out of the side of the camper got the barrel roof which makes the rain run off a lot more even it's not always going to one side depending on how level you are if you're off just a hair it always runs to one side which is kind of annoying if it's on the awning side you get more drip in the front back this being the barrel roof it Kind of evenly does it on both sides and inside it makes you feel like you have higher ceilings than you actually do it's a pretty neat feature the ladder was installed by r cd and Pataskala. maybe rdc always get that messed up okay hot water tank standard six gallon hot water tank vent put this on this keeps mud doppers and stuff out of there so they're not in there building up on you over the winter satellite electrical and then this is where you would plug your satellite cable or your cable TV into um, what another thing that I don't really like much about it is this is the exhaust for the Stove hood vent This is where your TV bracket is supposed to go So if you want an outdoor TV you can put the bracket here or anywhere over here and uh, Just slide your TV on and off Not leave it out here, but Hate to put it in that spot and then turn on the hood range and it's just blowing hot air from something cooking on the stove right onto your television so I would probably move it to the left so that that's not an issue so in here I'm trying to level get it as level as I can for this level pro system never going to have anything 100% perfect but the idea that you can just back in and know whether you're level or not is just awesome you can see this change in numbers if I'm shaking the trailer it makes a change so on this you just install this box Try to get the box level doesn't have to be don't waste a lot of time trying to get it level up just make sure the arrows are up on it follow the instructions which are really clear good instructions level out your coach to where you think that it's uh the most comfortable and the most level that's left to right This is 
front to back. And if you slide these levels and move them around, your bubble moves. I mean, these floors are level, but they're not by any means 100% level. And it's as, it's as good as it's gonna get, so I'm happy with where it's at. So let's come over here, hit the settings button, set level. Sure, that's what you want to do. Yes. Vehicle set saved. So you're updated. Now you go back and it says that I'm all zeros, which means I'm all level. So we just turn it to a red dot because I'm moving around in here. So we'll go out. And I have it disconnected from the truck, so the easiest way right now is going to be to move the tongue jack. Raise the tongue jack up a good bit. That's where you can see it. That tells me we need to go down 1.5 inches on the nose. So I'll go down 1.5 inches and then some. See if I can get this. telling me to go up 1.25 inches. Laying it on that ground seems to be causing it to lose signal. Block some of the sun. We're going down. Wind's blowing a little bit, so it's moving around, but now it's telling me it's back level. This one's on the tablet. You can have it on multiple devices. and. What I thought at first is you had to reset each device and it doesn't. It tells you the temperature. It's got a temperature gauge that's built into it. It's about 90 in the RV. Power on the battery on the box that's on the wall in there is uh, full. It's got a switch on it that'll turn it off when it's not in use. So when you store it or you're driving where you're going, a little switch right here you can turn it off that way you're not draining your battery and then when you turn it on it'll beep twice that tells you it's ready to go and you can connect to it and see how level you are and that's that's all it is to putting that in it's not uh, not hard or difficult to do at all unexpected disconnections because I turned it off. Close the app, open it back up. Connects right back up. That's a Levelmate Pro. I've seen this on uh, loveyourrv.com. Watch a lot of his videos. 
and uh, he had got one to do a, a little video on it and how to install it. It's a lot more detailed than this one, but once I caught the quick little gist of it, I thought uh, it's definitely something that, that I want to put on mine. When I first installed it, this is I'm actually redoing it now because this cabinet is completely wasted space and uh, needs to be used for something so I got an idea for it. The bubble levels on the outside and it's, this one is uh, telling me I'm level from uh, right side to left side and this one's telling me that I'm level front to back dry weight on this trailer is 7318 the last time I pulled through the scales I think it was about 8500 GVWR is a little over 9,000 pounds on this so we're well within the the weight barriers so being concerned about the tongue weight I don't want to stick too much up underneath of that storage area so when I bought this I had the jackknife sofa here um, this u-shaped dinette set and then this jackknife here in the back which has storage under it nice storage um, that's completely wasted space so what I can't figure out why Forest River would not have put outside panels to access this is just absolutely beyond me so anything in there that you're gonna need you're gonna have to track all the way through your RV to get it especially if you have some of your leveling blocks and things like that you're gonna have to just track back and forth through your RV to get in there to get it this u-shaped dinette has a storage here underneath I try to do this without taking the table completely out but if you ever store anything in here you're gonna have to take the table out completely wasted space I don't want to bust the table down to get back there to get anything out that's the outside wall no reason they didn't put a storage hatch in there so you could access this from the outside and that also goes for the same for when the jackknife was here it had a storage in the front but had a big pull out drawer you could pull the drawer out completely wasted space so I called and asked if I could cut holes inside where was the metal framing and was there any electrical lines or anything in there I was going to saw through Forest River just said if you do that it'll void your warranty how does the air conditioner warranty get voided by cutting a hole in the side I don't know that's how they do it so looking on the outside on this back slide this whole back section is where that jackknife sofa is. So you can put an access door here. That would be great because here's your water. That's your city water hookup. Here's your hoses and stuff for your uh, termination caps and all your sewer sanitation stuff. Back here in the back is where you hook up your cable or your TV. Stuff for the grill you can keep in your outdoor kitchen, your charcoal and lighter fluid and all that stuff. I'm forced to keep chocks back here because there's no other place to store them. The middle slide 
this window here is where the u-shaped dinette set is so right here is a great place to put the storage outside storage and that will definitely help offset some of the weight instead of putting everything in the front right on the nose which just adds more tongue weight kind of doesn't make any sense why they wouldn't do that it's almost like they want you to stick everything in the front to overload the tongue it, it makes no sense these slides are usually uh, it's aluminum framing all through here but I think the only thing that's really shored up real good is right underneath these windows they tend to use a lot of extra framing that's in there but as far as the other sides I don't think there's a lot that's in there it's, it's hard and difficult to try to get schematics to show how these are built and put together at least it's not as easy as going and putting in 308 BHS on their website and then it pop up and show you that so I don't want to cram a whole bunch of stuff in here forced to now because I don't have any other storage in here I mean the lights that are here I had to install those they didn't have lights in the storage compartments you know some of the Cougars and other brands do but they didn't laundry shoot so got it level now got it programmed So I'll do another uh, quick clip that I'll try to add into this one that shows the uh, trailer uh, tongue scale so you can check your, your trailer weight. I did take a little video when I did mine. Maybe I can try to get it edited and tied into this, but I don't get much into editing videos and stuff. So I'll see if I can't find somebody that can do that. So what I plan on doing with this wasted space here from the back wall to the outside face of this is about eight and a quarter inches. The width is 30, the height is 27. I think it's a great place for a fireplace those are between 30 and 50 pounds right now I think I'm about 975 on my tongue weight my uh, easy E2 hitch round bar system has a thousand pounds so I think I'm within a couple hundred pounds of that but you got to take into consideration when you load your groceries and stuff in I try to load everything in the bunkhouse that way I'm not adding any more additional weight onto the tongue but uh, once my year is up and there's no longer a manufacturer warranty, first order of business is to put those baggage doors in in those two areas and start distributing some of that weight back there. September right now, we only have one more trip planned for the season and then we won't be back at it until March or April. I bought this in August, so I don't mind waiting a year. It's not worth voiding the warranty to be doing any modifications like that. And as far as the fireplace, they may consider that a modification, but that's kind of generic if they do because the fireplace, you just have to take this door off, take that door off, take the center piece out, put the fireplace in, run the electrical cord, plug it right in. That's not much of a modification. We even consider putting our outdoor TV in the back. Don't know if that's considered a modification or not. So might as well wait before we do that, just to be sure. Here's a good place to put your shoes. Just kind of throw your shoes under there, they're out of the way, so you're not tripping over them that much. The DVD player that's built into this, 
So there's no function on the remote to actually switch it to DVD. So when you want to watch a DVD, you just put it in and it automatically turns the TV on. And then your A speakers, B speakers, and your C speakers. I know the C speakers are the outside speakers. They also have neons in them. Your awning lights. Speakers got neons in them. Your awning lights can be multiple collars. A ridiculous amount of collars. That's on the remote control here. So any collar that's on this remote, you can turn those lights into you can make it switch collars, you can make them um, super bright, 75, 50, 25. There's so many options for lighting, it's a little bit crazy. Light switch here, this is where you check your tanks, your battery. Fresh, black, gray one, gray two. Gray one is your main gray tank, and then gray two, gray two is the outdoor kitchen sink only. It has a small holding tank of its own. Water pump, water heater. Awning slide, or awning. This is the main slide, and then this is the back slide in the back. I don't know why this is separated like that. I would have thought this would have been the awning, and this would be the slides, and it's not. This is the awning. This is the slide. And this is a slide. There's a decent shot of the barrel roof. Really does give you a lot of additional headroom. speakers up there. More lights. It's like a main light switch there that turns all the lights on. There's tons of LEDs. These are all LEDs. Most of the newer units are all LEDs. Just really surprised that there's only one vent in here because in my old camp I used to keep the vents open year round even in the winter. That way there was never any threat of moisture building up and then you get condensation up on your ceiling and no warranty covers any of that stuff. So once I get it back to the storage lot and I park it, I actually open the bathroom door. That way the entire RV is somewhat vented and not just the bathroom. So it doesn't get too hot and hold too much moisture inside here. Mold is something you don't want. So I'm wondering why they never stuck a fireplace in here in the first place. I mean, it's an awesome spot for it. It's plenty deep enough. You got to do your shopping around. I'll probably do a clip on that install, maybe a quick before and after and um, show you what that looks like. I'm going to have about two inches of space left at the top. Once the fireplace is put in, I'm going to have to take this out, cut it in half, mount it here, to extend this a little bit the fireplace is 27 and 3 quarters this is 29 so I'll be sliding in there just make sure it gets a good uh, tight fit and it's not going to move when in transit and then here I'm gonna go to Lowe's or Home Depot and see if I can find maybe some piece of a uh, piece of tinted black glass that way I can flip it down or flip it up that being exposed like that with the fireplace in there, I think that'll look kind of ugly. So I'll get something to fix that up a little bit. Uh, 
Um, this I kind of rigged up just to make sure when it's closed up for the winter that you're not getting uh, any mold or any nasty smell in there from sitting over the winter. There's actually a piece here. Once you're loaded and you're going down the road, you put this in. That screws in there. It keeps your doors from opening up when you're driving down the road, but needed a little bit of a longer one for winter storage so that I could actually get propped open a little bit. And this is the 10, I guess a 10.3 cubic foot residential. Um, another good reason to go with a residential if you have that option. Um, looks a little crappy the way they just throw it in there. There's not much trim around it. What you got is you got a bracket here You got a bracket there And then you got two screws that they just put right through the foot here And that's the factory install You can see the refrigerator Moves a little bit Luckily, you're not riding back here listening to that. It would just drive you insane. But if anything ever did happen to this outside of a warranty window, you could buy another refrigerator for four or 500 bucks and just replace it. I mean, this is a Whirlpool. I looked it up. They're online. They're about 450 bucks. So you can just absolutely buy one, replace it. Just plugs in. It's not a big deal. I had a Jayco years ago that had the regular RV that runs off of gas or electric. It's got those fins in the back, back here. Usually there's, there's fins. Um, 2,700, 3,500, something like that to replace that refrigerator when it quit working. It's just absolutely ridiculous. Residential, go buy another one, take this out, put it in, you're done. Air conditioner, Dematic. This is a three wire system. This is supposedly the newest technology that they have out, and it is absolutely annoying. I don't have any electricity where I'm at to show you, but this system, you set the fan for auto, high, or low. If you set the fan for high or low, it never turns off. It will run 24-7 as long as you have power on to the unit. If you set it on auto, it will kick on and off with the system. What makes it annoying on auto is that it has a variable fan speed. So when you get up in the morning, you're cooking your breakfast, you got your stove on, it's hot. This thing went from high to low, from high to low, every 10 seconds back and forth. So once it turns on, you get a little bit complacent, you start getting used to the sound, and then it switches to high, so you have to turn your TV up, either talk louder on your conversation, then it kicks back down. It just cycled back and forth so much, I thought something was wrong with it. It made no sense to me. I've never seen one do it. The whole concept, the whole theory of that is, is a good idea, but it's not a whisper system. You can hear this thing. It is loud and, and annoying. So I wanted to opt to get a different thermostat installed so that it would not do that, and there is no thermostat that will work with this. You'd have to end up rewiring the entire system. You have your yellow wire usually that goes to your compressor, your red, which is your 12 volt. You may have a blue, which is a negative 12 volt. And then you have a green, that's your fan. That's four wires, this only has three. I think this had a red, a blue, and a green. There was no white, there was no yellow. So this system wires in somewhere to a main brain that tells it what to do. I don't think it's solely told what to do from that thermostat. So hopefully in a couple years they'll have something out because when I called Coleman and asked them, they said I am not the first person to call in and complain about that particular feature. A lot of people don't like it. 
Always ask your customers before you make a change like that. Get a feeler. Don't just change technology and say it's the greatest thing out there and it ends up and it sucks. If, you, if these were not as loud as they were and you didn't have to listen to them, I mean, the whole coach rumbles. If you're laying in bed asleep when that thing kicks on, it's rumbling. Which is uh, almost expected to an extent, but when it changes speed every 15 seconds, you can't get complacent and listen to that. It, it gets to be extremely annoying. The other option was to add a second unit in here, and that's not possible because it's a 30 amp coach, and if I add a second unit, A, they have to cut a hole, run electrical, and then I would only be able to run one at a time because I only have a 30 amp unit. To put in a new unit, they can put the unit in, they, should, they, they definitely can do that, but I have to change out the entire electrical system and that's somewhere around four or five grand and that's just not worth it. So I mean, we're in Ohio, it's not like we're in Texas or Florida, so I think we'll get by with it. For now, I'll just run it on low, maybe high, and then uh, guess just kind of get used to it. I mean, we like the trailer. That's not any reason to get rid of it, but that's something they definitely could have thought out a whole lot better than they did. So it's almost 100 degrees in here. I'm leaving. Thanks for watching.